something I've learned is like if if you just tell someone, uh, hey, you're wrong, you have to do it this way, no one's going to be perceptive of that. That's mm-hmm. going to turn everybody off. Mm-hmm. And and the reason I know that is because I used to do that. I used to say things like that. And no one no one wants to listen to a jerk who thinks they know everything and he's telling them they're wrong. So ultimately, and I've said this in a few posts, I don't want to demonize any movement. You're listening to the Restoring Human Movement podcast, where movement experts discuss the latest evidence-based practices to help you and your clients move with mastery. And now, your host, Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez. Hey guys, it's Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez with the Restoring Human Movement podcast of 2019. Thanks for being part of the Movement Movement. So, we're going to have on Grant Elliott today. Actually, he is a seven-term chiropractic student at Logan University, and he's doing amazing work with Instagram. I'm always very envious of people who have a good stage presence, who have a really do a really good job of communicating very complex things in a simple manner. And he's doing an amazing job with it. And if you've heard some of the past podcasts I've done, uh, if you've been lay public or patients, you might not have cared as much with some of the marketing YouTube material um, topics that we've covered. But for the most part, it's important. If you have if you found me useful, you found me because someone has helped push this content to you. So us as uh, clinicians to get information out there is an important thing. And we don't learn it in school. We don't learn anything about it. And we're deathly afraid of public speaking, just like everybody else. So creating this kind of thing is hard. It's really hard. And Grant's doing an amazing job at it. So find him on Instagram. It's Rehab Fix. And he just rebranded. And you're going to notice that there's also, too, if you go down his thread, and you're going to notice that his uh, material changed a little bit. But here's what I want you to notice, at least from the viewer standpoint, is he's excited and interactive. Okay? He's just taking a very simple concept and suggesting a few changes. He's not telling people to not necessarily do certain things all the time or demonize movement. He's just trying to improve a little bit more. So he's very positive with it. It's, it's amazing. It's really good. And the thing that I think is the most amazing part is he's doing it in term seven. So if you've heard my story in the past, I started my content creation in term seven too. So you're about a year or so until you get out of school. And we're not trying to tell anyone where that we're fixing things or we're diagnosing things because we can at that point. But for the most part, we can still help out with creating movement-based corrections. So it's very pure. I love it. So Grant's going to share us uh, share with us his journey with that today. Um, and hopefully we're going to see, uh, you're going to hear a lot about skateboarding. So if you skateboard in the past, you're going to resonate well with this thing. But if you're students, you're going to love it. If you're patients, by the way, his, his content is more patient-friendly than clinician-friendly, although we can learn a lot from it. So go on and follow him, uh, Rehab Fix. It's amazing stuff. Now, before we get into that, I'll tell you a little bit of a story I have here. So I got to hear Third Eye Blind coming in today, the semi-charm life. You know what I'm talking about? And I make a smile like a drug for you. Do ever what you want to do coming over you. Keep on smiling, what will we go through? Don't stop to the rhythm that divides you. And I speak to you like the chorus of the verse. Yeah. So, I don't know if you get those songs that pump you up, but I definitely got the songs pumping up. It doesn't matter what mood I'm in. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go down with this song right now. And... It's funny, over the 4th of July holiday, so we get this playlist that people were kind of complaining about. Like, we like to play, I like to play reggae. That's just my thing. You know, like, Revelation, um, Iration, Iration Radio. It's all popular. People love that shit now. But anyways, so people were like, you know, what? you guys keep playing, like, this, this same music. I'm like, I don't know, it gets people pumped up, except for you. And uh, they're like, no, you got to get some better stuff. And I said, okay, fine. Why don't you guys pick over this next year? You pick something that makes you makes makes you get going. But you got to keep in mind though that when you make this Fourth of July playlist playlist, that you can't actually pick songs that only get you pumped up. So I'm like, you know, there was a lot of songs that I actually didn't pick because I'm like, this is a cool song. This is great. I love it, but no one likes it. Like an example, one that would work that I don't love is "Turn Down for What." I mean, you go through a grocery store, or like one time I was in a shoe store. Where like grandma was down as soon as it came on, shoe store the shoe store all of a sudden started getting real wiggly. Like she started wiggling in her seat, you know. So there's songs that just people get people going, and one of them that does not work. No matter how much people push it, they seem like they act like they like it. At first, they like the idea, but they don't actually move. And this was the Britney Spears "Hit Me Baby One More Time." And so you put it on, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I like this one." And what you, I think what you hear is nostalgia. And I'm like, okay, so. Every time this song comes on, without you having to think, 
y'all better dance. And so the song comes on, and uh, I'm like, I'm going to put it on right now. Put it on right now. And uh, they're like, oh, wait, wait. So let me, I think this is how the moves go. And I'm like, look, if you're not just going, if you're just not going, then, then, it, then it ain't good enough. But you put on some, like, real, like, like dirty bass type of stuff. Like, even, like, I'm not a big fan of hip-hop. But you put that kind of stuff on, like, uh, turn down for what? You don't think twice. All of a sudden, you just move. So, Third Eye Blind is my jam. Uh, what's yours? Here we go. Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome on Grant Elliott, who is, uh, you're a student right now. I am still a student. Yes, a trimester seven student, to be specific. Seven. Um, so, for everybody... Actually, you know, what we didn't actually talk about was that who do you think is going to learn the most from you in this interview, a student, a patient, or an advanced clinician? Because they're going to be like, well, Um, I don't want to hear this if it's not for me. Good question. I mean, ideally, I would would think student because I still have so much to learn, but I've learned a lot up to up until this point, and I've taken a lot of advice from other docs, and I'm kind of doing the things that they told me they wish they would have done when they're in my position and I'm trying to implement those now. So ideally I think students would gain a lot of benefit from hopefully gain some benefit from the things I might, I might bring up. Oh, good. Yeah. I actually, I thought you'd, um, I thought it'd be interesting to have you on because you're like, so when I started actually in my practice around term seven or eight is when I started making videos and stuff too. Yours are much better. But oh, man. <laughs> but you're just like straight hustling, and, and it's and it's tough. And I don't see a lot of students of of any profession really doing that. They're they're still they're still kind of absorbing the information versus teaching it. And when you're teaching it, it's very different. I'm sure you've re- realized that already, right? Oh, for sure. And uh, yeah, I, it's kind of like I don't really know what I got myself into <laughs> once I really committed to this social media game, if you will. Um, Cause yeah, I listened to your podcast with a uh, Doc Jen Fit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was analyzing everything she, she said, and she was like, "Yeah, you got to post every day, you know, almost two times a day." And I was like, "Damn, <laughs> okay." I was like, she, "Okay, let's do this." And she basically scared me out of Instagram, is what happened on that podcast. Yeah, my gosh, yeah, she would have scared me out, but then I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna try this and see where it goes." And so I, I am hustling. I appreciate that term uh, to the best of my ability, and um, you know, I'm trying to teach. I know that I still have so far to go, um, and I'm probably saying some things incorrectly already, but I'll have time to correct that down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The good thing is that, th- that they're all going to get buried, and then you'll make a new one again. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, so if, I know we just jumped into the conversation, but can you explain, uh, or just tell everyone who you are, uh, where you live, where you're going to school, and stuff like that. Okay. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm Grant Elliott, obviously. Um, I'm originally from just north of Indianapolis in a in a suburb called Carmel. It's part of a Hamilton County. It's a really nice county out there, and Carmel is kind of known as like uh, like the rich snobby city, right? But I was in the southmost part of it, on the border between Carmel and Indianapolis. So I lived in a small little ranch home. Had to pay my way through college, pay my way through here now in grad school, and. But yet in undergrad, everyone was like, oh, you're from Carmel, like wine and cheese district. So um, I'm, I'm not one of those, nor do I have anything against them, but just kind of a funny nuance. What so, does a silver so, spoon taste like, actually? Oh, my gosh. It kind of <laughs> makes the steak taste worse, but the golden flakes take a, taste a little bit better. I, I want to know, though, right? <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I grew up there. I'm in St. Louis now. I'm going to Logan University. It's College of Chiropractic. Um, like I said, I'm a trimester seven student, and that's out of 10 trimesters. So I'm in my last year at this point, which is like pretty much insane. Uh, it's crazy to, crazy to say that. And I'm already like looking for um, like residency options and things like that because I got to know where I'm moving by next August, and that's just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, still a student. I do have my CSCS. I, I can't remember if I said that or not. So I am personal training on the side for purely for experience, to be honest, because um, I was learning all these things in school. And I was always hearing, you know, you got to learn how to integrate everything. And I was like, all right, well, no better way to integrate this cool material than with real people at a gym. So I started personal training. Uh, just I think just over a year ago so I could take these things and practice it there with real people and I've gained huge experience 
mm-hmm. from doing that. And that was one of the best decisions I've made, to be honest, what, since what, being at Cairo School. What you actually, what do you think you learned through that process of uh, working with people and just implementing um, that you didn't maybe learn in school? Like, was there a part where you're like, oh, shit, we should have known this? Yeah, uh, communication, first off, big time. Um, sure, they always say, like, all right, you got to, like, you know, use... I don't want to say simple terms. I don't like that connotation, but more like basic terms. You can't act like you're talking with fellow colleagues. And it's one thing to say that, but it's another thing to actually do that, like consistently all the time. So when I first started training, I was using all these terms without even realizing it. And I was like totally over cueing or like cueing the wrong way. And I was like, oh my God, I'm awful at this. And then <laughs> the, the more I did it, I learned how to talk better. I learned how to get people into the positions I wanted better and just helping people move better. And uh, that is something I would have not learned in school because I get my hands on twice as many people now because I have my people at the gym and I have my people <laughs> in student clinic. So mm-hmm. do they, the experience I'm getting is priceless. Do they do they encounter you a different way? Like looking at you as, as a coach or a trainer versus a clinician? Are there different mm-hmm. questions or different concerns that they have maybe? Um. Not entirely because I do inform them on my background. Mm -hmm. So I think they do feel a little bit more comfortable asking me potentially more complex questions. Um, But I don't, I don't find that is super common. I mean, we have pretty, um, pretty low level conversations for the most part, but I mean, I think they would be comfortable asking any coach or any trainer about those, about those issues. They just know I might have a more specific answer. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, I mean, I feel like the conversation is pretty, pretty normal i would imagine them to approach anyone that way okay what's the i haven't really noticed what's their what's their goals then i'm just curious because i know that with clinical based stuff a lot of times it's it's they'll they'll come in and it's like well what do you want from me and they're like i want you to get me out of pain it's like can can you dig deeper give me something more than that um i would imagine when they come to you as a trainer they're like i want to lose weight or get stronger Mm -hmm. or they they might leave other parts off so are their goals a little bit different the same so here's part of the beauty yes you're you're absolutely right but because my uh, like my boss at work, mm-hmm. he knows my background as well. He will only set me up with clients that have goals that he knows I can complement very well. So, not that I'm opposed to helping someone lose weight, but that's not what I'm passionate about, and mm-hmm. he knows that. So, if someone comes in like they just want to lose weight and that's it, he won't send them to me. But if someone comes in and they're like, "Hey, I've tried working out before, but..." You know, I have, you know, na- a- achy knees or my back stiff or like my shoulder hurts and I can't do these movements and I don't know what to do. Then I get those kind of people. Mm-hmm. Or if people just purely want to strength train, uh, which I like lifting heavy stuff and, and all that jazz. So he'll put those people with me too. But he, I kind of have more of a specific niche, either people who really want to improve function um, or people who just purely want to get bigger and stronger. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, that's cool. That's good. That's good that he's delegating out that way. I'm sure oh, that's for more- sure. I'm sure it's more fun for you. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly what I, what I would like. So that's awesome. So um, as you've gone through school then, what has your has your mindset changed a little bit about what you're going to do, how to implement things with people maybe? Or um, I know our schooling started with, um, what would it be, biochem, anatomy, structure, you know? Um, but what's your thoughts? Like has your thought changed at all or did you come in thinking, hey, I'm going to practice a certain way and you just started to mold that way? Yeah, so I've changed an enormous amount, and I think that's really important. Um, I came in with one mindset from all the shadowing I did previously and you know, kind of the conceptions I already had about chiropractors and what they might do and blah, 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 uh, including the ones I liked, the ones that were good. And so I came in with one notion, and I was like, all right, like this is the best stuff. This is what I'm going to do. Like Any club that talks about this, I'm going to be at. And... Um, I was, I was exposed to way more than that. And I had to take a conscious step back and be like, okay, this is kind of going against what I originally thought. Why is it going against what I thought? Uh, Let me evaluate this and let me make a decision for myself. And I've kind of let those scenarios really guide me along where I'm at in school at this point. So I think I've changed a lot. I came in with one mindset of this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to be. And I feel as though I'm not total 180, but mm-hmm. maybe like a 160. <laughs> what, what's uh, what's maybe like one one example of, of something that kind of changed your thought? You're like, holy shit, I gotta 
I don't know if I can treat oh. people anymore. I got to revamp everything. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of a that's kind of a complex answer for me because I would have to figure it completely out on my own. Um, but like, so I'll try to answer that to the best of my ability. Um, I came in <laughs> and I was like, all right, chiropractors are like, you know, the sports docs and which which we are, and, that, and that's great. But I was like, sports docs, like soft tissue, like uh, you know, like on the field, whatever. That was like where my head was at. And I didn't realize how clinical we could really be to a certain extent. Um, I kind of thought we were just, you know, over in this zone and that was our zone. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to be doing these cool rehab stuff with people. If someone comes in with a achy hamstring, I'm going to ART the hamstring, you know. I, I, see, yeah. I see the manual in the back over there. <laughs> oh, God, oh, no, no, no. It's, I promise it's not here. <laughs> not, not against anyone who, who does that. Everything has a place. Everything mm-hmm. has a place, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting to. Um, but my mindset was like, yeah, soft tissue, everyone, you know, taping, cool exercise, and that's it. And at this point, like my thought process has grown to think soft tissue as a kind of a, a last, not last resort, but kind of lower on the totem pole. And I think way more nervous now, like I rule out any nerve contribution that there could possibly be before looking because, and this is something I learned through taking my neurology courses was, you know, muscles are stupid. Like (laughs) they do what they're told from the brain and from the nervous system. And to look there first, you're missing so many other steps. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went into school, someone has a hamstring type feeling whatever it might be i'm looking straight at the hamstring doing art on it to let's take a step back let's observe their movement let's uh rule out their spine let's go farther downstream rule all the nerve contribution let's find an accurate diagnosis and then let's let the diagnosis determine what we do Mm -hmm. instead of taking our favorite technique and throwing it right at it yeah that's kind of how i've changed in a in a couple sentences cool yeah that's um it's actually just the the podcast that's that's going right before yours uh, i was talking about um c5 radiculopathy basically like paris um like periscapular pain things like that mm-hmm. and i go through three case studies and and uh, i was trying to frame it as like there's a first aid period there's a supportive period a loading one and then usually if you imp- implement one a little too soon or too late then it's there's there's some haphazardness that happens on the patient's parts or flare-ups or whatever. So I uh, I talked about tissue work in there as well because I had the same come from. It was like I go into school and like I would tissue work and ART this stuff and it would feel better, but then it would come back. And um, and I'm and I'm down with doing the tissue work, like I said in there. But I, I, now I'll tell patients that when they come in that they have like what do you want and they're like well I want tissue work and this and this and that. And I've lost patients in the past because I'm like I'm not going to do that to this thing. And now I'll say, like, look, it might be needed at some point, just not right now. Let's unmuddy the water, and then what parts might still need it might reveal themselves. But um, so I'm kind of the same as you with that. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't, I think it took me years out of school to finally figure that out, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, that's cool. So you are now making a bunch of videos that are, I don't want to say silly, but they're good. They're entertaining. Um, so your, your, your handle on Instagram is rehab fix, right? Yep. Yes, it is. At what point did you finally decide that I'm just going to make a shit ton of videos and there's no stopping point to doing this ever? <laughs> oh man. Um, the moment I kind of realized, uh, let, let, let's say about a year ago, I started making just little videos here and there of like no professional camera, no mics, just throwing my iPhone on whatever could hold it. And I think I was talking about like foot mobility stuff and I, in the very first video I, video I made, I made it just because I was like, this is important. So many people ask me questions that could be related to this video. Why don't I just make a video to help educate my friends on social media or Facebook or whatever? And then also, whenever anyone asks me a question about this topic and I'm not there to show it, I can just refer them to my video. Mm-hmm. I'm scratching my itch, just mm-hmm. like you've talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started making those and I was kind of like, you know, this is kind of fun. Like, I, uh, I was getting into instructing for R2P at the club level at school. And I was, and I was, uh, I was kind of getting used to teaching and instructing there as I was learning. So I kind of noticed that that was fun for me. And I really, really do enjoy teaching. That's a, that's a passion of mine at whatever level it may be mm-hmm. now or in the future. So I was like, you know what? These videos are kind of fun. I got to teach people something that they might not know. I got to, you know, scratch my own itch and whatnot. 
Um, so then I kind of just started making a few more, a few more. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to put out like <laughs> maybe a video a week, maybe of just in the gym. And then I started realizing that a social media following of any kind is a giant foundation for any business. Doesn't matter what the business is, it literally will supplement anything at all. And I looked at what the other really good docs are doing, and most of them have some kind of an influence. And I was like, you know what? No better time to start doing these videos than now because I can mess up right now. I can make myself look silly and I can screw things up so that by the time I actually have a DR next to my name in the future, I'm much more fine tuned. I'm saying the right stuff, not being as silly. And I have a pretty professional product. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of just rolled with it from there, was doing every like, you know, two, three days posting something. And I, like I said, I listened to your podcast with Doc Chen Fit. And I was like, all right, it's time to try to try to figure out something that's going to hook more people, that's going to sound more professional. So I changed my name from just Grant Elliott to Rehab Fix, mm -hmm. got a logo made, got an intro made. And now I'm just, uh, spending all day, every day on Instagram, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, I bet your heart just like, as soon as she said that, your heart just dropped. It's like, oh my God, I got to stop <sighs> doing this or just go full bore. Yes. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It was, that was a tough choice. And, uh, my wife helps me film a lot of stuff actually. Um, I'll probably make her listen to this later. Is, is <laughs> so she, is she your, she's your model in the videos right now. She's my model in the videos. And when I don't have a model in the video, she's my cameraman. No. And uh, oh my gosh, if I didn't have her, I'd be screwed. And she's uh, she's so dang patient with me. So um, if you're listening, baby, I love you. Thank you so much because <laughs> uh, I I need I need her so much. Oh my gosh. So uh, it's turned into quite the operation. I got my backdrop. I got my studio equipment. Got my studio lights. Going to reorder a new camera soon. And I'm just like, whatever. Let's just try this out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, at least I tried. And at least I have some content. Mm -hmm. so, you know. Yeah, they're really they're really good, um, and you know I think that uh, I'd spoken to another student before, and they're like, "What? Well, how do we get speaking? Like, uh, how do we get speaking practice?" I'm like, "The great thing about being a student, I think, is that you you can't get any patients really. Like, you're not supposed to, except for into the student clinic, right? But it's it's almost like there's more purity in it. It's like I'm not trying to get anything from these people. I'm just trying to educate them. And in your videos, you don't even say your name anymore." You know, and uh, no, <laughs> because you're, you can't put doctor in front, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's what Jen's thing was, is she just gave the shit out of it for like three years and all of a sudden people liked her, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, did you hear the one with uh, uh, Aaron Horsig, Squat yeah, University? Yeah, well, for sure. Absolutely. He's the same way. He just seems to like it. Like, I don't personally like it. And I'll be honest. I don't like it. I like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you do. But I don't, I don't like posting pictures, honestly. Except for about steak and boating. That's, oh my god, <laughs> your your tomahawk videos on your Instagram story just they kill me. Oh. I'm like, oh my god, I need that so bad, dude. There's uh, so during uh, so this is going to release actually on uh, January second. So okay. I've now learned that during uh, Thanksgiving time. So I tried to have people over. We're going to do three tomahawks that day, and I went to Costco. We got them here. We went to the second Costco. They didn't have it there. Um, so I went to Costco twice. I went to two butcheries. No one had a fucking tomahawk steak. And so I had to settle for a tri-tip, um, settle, but it was, yeah, settle. <laughs> it was still, it was still good. So we had crab legs and tri-tip, but I wanted the tomahawk steaks. So great. Yeah. Had to settle. You got to settle. Tough. <laughs> so, so, uh, your, your videos do, um, I see some of the some of the topics were you did silly exercises, hip orientation with squatting, debunking myths with deadlifting. Um, I especially like the tight hip flexor one actually because I've noticed that it seems like you're not necessarily telling the people that it's wrong what you're doing. Like go ahead and stretch your hip flexor, but maybe do it this way and then go walk. Or there was the yeah. rotator cuff one where it's like if you choose to do that, that's cool. Maybe we improve this 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 way too. Mm -hmm. So. I'm surprised that you're like, cause a lot of people like to bash other techniques. You're just kind of letting their belief happen and then adding to it. It looks like. Yeah, for sure. And Hey, Oh my gosh. As a trainer and just as anyone who's a fitness enthusiast in general, that spends a lot of time in the gym. Um, once you kind of become aware of these movements, you see them, you see them all the time. They stand out like a sore thumb and you're just like, no, stop it. And you want to go over and say something, but you know you can't because then they'll feel offended in some way. So that's when I go, hey, you know what? I'll make a video. And then I'll talk to them at a later time 
like, hey, you should check out my channel. And then maybe they'll work through that. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a good software. You, yeah. How many times, by the way, how many times do you ask someone if they need a spot this month? Hey, bro. Uh, <laughs> I probably only maybe a couple times, to be honest. I don't really, I don't really like people jumping in and asking me stuff because I get in the zone when I work out. So I don't really do that to other people. But every once in a while, every once in a while, if I see someone trying a movement that I can tell um, is pretty new to them and they're trying to work on something specific, I will go over and be like, hey, like, are you trying to, I don't know, target your glute needs or your, or your glutes with this specific exercise? And like, yeah, I saw this somewhere. I'm trying to like figure it out. And then in a scenario like that, I'll be like, hey, that's awesome. This is my background. Let me see if I can help. And they're usually receptive. Mm -hmm. But typically, I try to stay out of, I try to stay out of other people's ways in the gym. <laughs> well, nice. So, so you're looking for nonverbal communication? Uh, I mean, ideally. The, you're looking, you're looking at like, like the eyebrows are always up like this. You're thinking about how to do that clamshell. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They're like, how is this shown again? Like, hey, I, think I might have that memorized actually. Yeah. Um, I saw that on your on your feed today. Actually, you showed your studio. Uh, is for all the people attempting to make some videos, how hard is it? What was the biggest barrier, you think? Well, it's it's tough to say because for me, I have a background in, we'll say, loose filming and editing. Um, due to when I was younger, I used to skate a lot. And I was filming and editing skate videos throughout a lot of my childhood. So I've actually been using the same software I used then. It's a, it's Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I'm just using an updated version. So I kind of have a foundation. So I already knew, like, I know how to cut, cut stuff. I know how to add effects. I know how to create titles. I already knew how to do all of that. All I needed was just a professional setup. So for people that are considering, hey, I want to start making videos, I I would encourage everyone to start making videos for the numerous reasons we've mm -hmm. discussed. You learn how to talk to people, right? You learn how to speak. You uh, teach yourself because you're researching topics you want to talk about. Um, but you don't need anything special. If you have an iPhone, you're good to go. Yeah, you can start. So you can now. start making videos. Oh yeah, you don't you don't need anything special. If you want something special, then find some really good deal on Craigslist like I did mm -hmm. um, and order some cheap paper backdrop like I did, which was $80 and then get the stand for it, get some basic lights and just shoot from there. But by no means is my setup something amazing. It's just, we'll say cost efficient, but it works. Yeah. How much was your lighting kit? Mine was like a hundred bucks, I think just for two three uh, lights. I got three lights. See, I see. I, I regret that. I got the two, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, should have done the three. So I have two box lights, and I think the two box lights with the stands and everything. I think it was. Oh my god, I think it was only like eighty or yeah. seventy. Yeah, they're it good. was not. It was not very much, and they're legit lights. Like they're they're awesome. Yeah, that's all you need. There was there was one video I watched back in the day. I think it was on YouTube. It was Newman Films, two ends. I think. Okay. But they so they they did all these short films and. um they didn't hit, never hit. They never hit movies or anything. It's like five minutes, just being creative. And they did uh, one where they showed the effects of lighting, um, forward, backwards, top lighting, halo effect. And I thought it was really interesting. So I'm like, shit, I got to get lights. Like, like there's no lights on me right now. We're talking, but it's because we're not going to use this. But mm -hmm. um, I think lighting is more important than than anything, really. Yeah, it will change the quality of your video so much. Like when I use my same camera and I'm just like in the gym filming something, the quality is vastly reduced compared to when I'm in my studio with my lights up and everything and I got the exposure all right. And yeah, they really do make a big difference and they're so cheap. Yeah, no, so it's so like, cheap. why not? Why not? Well, I, st I still remember some of the videos that I've seen, like I like to investigate whether videos are, are working well, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. industry or not industry, it doesn't really matter. And um so I'll look at it, I'm like, this is grainy, this one's out of focus. And if you look at like things like say like the office, like people love the office and it's there there's movement in the cameras, they're hiding behind shit, you know, and like uh they're out of focus and people still watch it. And uh I know they do it for effect, but I don't know if they have to be perfect, you know, and then still they still still make a dent and, and have a following, you know. Oh, yeah. Huge. So what, what was your what was your best trick with skateboarding then? Let's did you get uh, did you get sponsored? I think is the important part. <laughs> so we'll say this: I got sponsored by a a board company that had like just started locally, so they're trying to get some local skaters who 
were they thought were good enough to um, to hook up and could kind of rep them. And I was a part of that initial crew, although it didn't last super long. It was kind of just a some guy that was like, "Hey, let's get this let's get this rolling and see what happens." And unfortunately, it didn't last super long. So, but we can say. I was sponsored but <laughs> for a very for a very short period. Um, my best trick, though, do you still? Do you, how long did you skate for? Oh God, um, I had to be from like probably ten to eighteen, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. So you're pretty you're pretty good too, then I imagine. Right? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say good. We never, I never got a sponsorship or anything. We can learn. Okay, we, okay. we can land some some series with consistency, but okay, okay, heck yeah. So my, my specialty was the shove it, the shove it, <laughs> but not the pop shove it. Pop it and it's a game over. Oh, right? oh so sorry, it's turning on you. sorry. Yeah, it was pop shove it. Shove it, shove it's uh, just on the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. Wheels don't really leave the ground very much, or the tail doesn't pop. That's, right that's there was the there was the sound. There was the pop shove it. One time I got a crooked grind for about ten feet, and I about lost Ooh. my shit. <laughs> I really like crooker grinds actually. I did those a lot on the box, like up at the Euro at the skate park. Mm-hmm. You know, I really I was a big fan of crooked grinds. Um I skated I skated from eleven to about sixteen. Mm-hmm. And uh um I think the biggest stair set I did, I think I ollied like an eleven or twelve stair set. Something takes, like that. That takes commitment. Yeah, but were I mean, they were they ADA really compliant though? Were they big or were they short steps? Uh, no, no, no. They were, they, they were compliant. I swear. <laughs> yeah. They're actually like mini steps, like half an inch each one. I'm like, no, I, I only like 30 stairs. I swear. <laughs> and, um, anyway, uh, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought, but regardless, uh, I remember one trick. It was one of the last good tricks I'd filmed actually. Cause I took a big hiatus from skating and filming. Mm-hmm. And then my buddies who were still skating every, every dang day, they're like, yo, Grant. And I was the filmer guy, right? I was the filmer guy. So they're like, Hey, the local skate shop is called Rise Skateboard Shop. Uh, they were putting on like a, a little film festival and a competition between like different crews, you know, making their own tapes. And they're like, "Dude, we gotta, we gotta create a video and enter this, enter this film, this film festival." And I was like, "Heck yeah, I'm down. Let's do it." So I started kind of practicing more and kind of getting my feet back. And I filmed, I filmed almost the entire video. Some other people contributed. Uh, contributed i mean to some of the clips but i filmed almost the whole thing and then finally i was like all right someone else take the damn camera (laughs) someone film me doing something (laughs) and so it was once again up the euro and there was like a you know like a grind box of the euro Mm -hmm. and i was riding switch and i did a switch 180 to regular 5-0 to front shove out out of the 5-0 nice that's that's sponsor worthy really hey that's a that was a good trick i was I was good at that one. I practiced it a lot. Um, so that was kind of like my, at the skate park, you know, some good guys roll up, you're trying to impress them. Right. And it's like, realistically, <laughs> you do that trick all day long, but you kind of just bust it out and they're like, damn, that was good. And then you're like, all right, yeah, I got to go now. Yeah. See yeah. You guys. <laughs> so they talk about you for the next 30 minutes. You're like, God, that guy. <laughs> yeah. That was so easy for him. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, but I can't even kick flip. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to impress the young kids too. Um, the... So then I think the big question is, what was the name of the crew? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and what was the name oh. of the skate video, actually? Because you had to label it. And did you spell yes, skate right, yes, or did you yes. put an eight in it? No. There's, <laughs> there's, well, there was no word skate in it at all, but only the cool kids put the skate, as you know. Skate, mm, yeah. life, skate for life. Uh, the, the video, my friend picked the name. It was my best friend growing up. His name's, uh, his name's Andrew. Just got to see him a few days ago on Thanksgiving break. And, uh, you know, s- skaters are kind of weird. We just kind of like say weird stuff and do weird things because we don't really care. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting there and we were like, what do we name this freaking video? And he goes, uh, Federation for Nature. I'm like, what does that even mean? He's like, I don't know. It's just artistic. Put, yeah, he was like, just put an acronym for it. So we just called it FFN and that's all we called it. <laughs> we, we didn't think any more about it. And that was the name of the video. Oh, but it won, by the way. Oh, it, it did? Won. Yeah, it won. So, Can we get um, that posted on, on your story there? I'm sure you still – is it yeah, a sure. digital copy? <laughs> it, it's on YouTube. There's a YouTube link for it. Oh, that's all cool. I have, though. That'd be great. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll send it to you. I should. And I we should, all got I'm, gonna, a, I'm gonna write that go down. Ahead. YouTube link for skating. I need to make sure to to get that from you. Yes, <laughs> yes, you'll you'll get it. And we all were able to pick any board, any deck, I should say, of our choosing from the skate shop. So that was sweet. We all walked out of there with some boards, and mm. that was that was a that was a good day. You just you just reminded me of there was there was a uh, one one store one skate shop that put on uh, a little 
event years years and years back. So we heard there's going to be deck tosses, right? So you just go there and there's that, that mob of people. So I forgot what it was like to be in, in, a, in a deck and merch toss. Holy shit. Oh, you just you just fight. It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. That is My so friend dangerous. got a board, though. I was surprised. You mean a board like stuck in his forehead? No, he he caught it somehow. I think he I think he like people <laughs> dropped it or he yanked it out of their hands after they were fighting over it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> a quick change of direction with impulse. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my gosh! I've seen I've literally seen people who were like fighting for one merch and then they toss a deck and just get knocked in the face uh, with the other deck and they like cut their eyelids and they're still d- digging for it out of the blood and oh my gosh! You know, there's no better blood. external cue than pull the board. Pull the board. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's I don't, awesome. I don't know. What we used to, uh, actually. There was a there was a lady that came in that she's uh, we were we were, she had a uh, she had a fracture in her foot, so I was rehabbing her for some back stuff, and uh, I wanted to do some anti rotational things, and uh, so I just I held I held on to a rope and I said take the rope away from me, so she's setting her feet to do some pulling. She's a kindergarten teacher, and she's like, hey. I should, she'd been so excited about her, her care and her recovery. So she's like, hey, I should get the kids to do this. And so she sends me this video of all these kids like trying to pull an object, but like one is clearly winning, the, winning, the other one's not trying. And I, and I was like, make it something they want, you know, like like a deck. Yeah. Pull it. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be, you'd have to be creative to find the perfect object that like wouldn't tear, but also like strong enough. And they'd be like, yeah, I want this. You can't yeah. use like a teddy bear or anything. I was going to, I was going to say a puppy. <laughs> oh my god yeah uh, do you uh what do you th- what do you think your next what are your next video is going to be and how far are you, actually how far are you lined up for your other videos that you're already done with and they're sitting just waiting yeah so last night actually we filmed a whole bunch more we were filming for uh i think three and a half to four hours last night and i got i think i got 16 in mm. so I have enough videos for the next two and a half weeks because I'll probably throw in a couple infographics or, or something in there, or I'll film a couple random things at the gym. So I probably have two and a, two and a half to three weeks worth of footage saved up that I'll be editing and posting over the course of the time. And then mm-hmm. when that's up, I'll have to go, hey, I, I, so I have like a three man crew, like one of them's my wife, right? And then the, the guy that's filming when I'm using my wife as a model, he's my good friend named Alec, and he's in my trimester also. And he's he started a little um, a specific swimming like rehab uh, coaching kind of platform because he's combining his rehab and and clinical expertise with the swimming community because he's kind of saw a um, a lack within that. So he's trying to be kind of specific towards swimming. He called it H2 Optimal. And so he's like, hey, I need videos and you all have the equipment. So I'll film for you and then you film for me. Mm-hmm. So we got a nice little a nice little setup. So we went over there and we filmed about 16 videos for me. And I think we filmed like seven or eight for him. So I'm nice and stocked up <laughs> and, yeah. until we do it again in three weeks. That's nice. It's hard. It's hard to get a crew. Um, and yeah. uh, so actually, how what's his filming skill like for you? Did you have to teach him? Because you got a big background with it. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh my gosh. Uh, we have some some uh, not so funny bloopers from the first round of films we ever did with the studio because yeah i have background with it um from all my time filming skate videos i learned how to like sit down watch a skateboard video and be like okay how does this shot look so good and i learned how to figure out exactly how to mimic how those shots looked and because i've already developed that skill when i started watching instagram videos of people putting out similar content that i am i was able to be like okay this is what they're doing this is what I have to do. Got it. Yeah. So now my buddy, I, I love him, but he has no background <laughs> with this stuff. Right. <laughs> and so the very first time, uh, I was like, Oh yeah, just, just like move the camera to my cues, move it to what I'm pointing at. And he's kind of just like standing there like a statue, like not moving. <laughs> and right. I'm right. Like, and I'm like, this is gonna be a long night. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so we were, we were teaching each other as we went, for sure. It's probably a lot of editing on your part then on your videos, but not his. His are just like, like print it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would, I would like to think so. Every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, no, like I messed that up. And he'll be like, what are you talking about? It looked perfect. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You see this like 0.5 seconds right here? I shook a little <laughs> bit. We got to redo it. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. But it's it's good. Uh, last night was way better than a couple weeks ago. So, so he's learning and I'm getting better at getting in the right positions too. So we both work together. Yeah. 
That is, that is good. I, I like the idea of like just reverse engineering what's already working for other people. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do the same thing with watching things as well. Like I, I don't have a video background. I just have made enough where I can, I can think about it at least. But I've been looking at like delivery on, on people. I'm like, why are these comedi- comedians telling the same story and everyone laughs every time? And uh, mm-hmm. so I was looking up actually, I was going to read a book pretty soon about how to tell stories better or more engaging. So we can really get to the the point of the story versus ramble around. So that's my effort in communication, but I'm sure that's going to blend into a video pretty soon here. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, for sure. What's uh, what's the next topic you're going to hit? Are you doing them in clusters? Like I see a couple of randomness about it. Are you going to hit? So it is super random. Like I'll, I'll be at school. <laughs> it's so it's so random. It's so random. I'll be at school and people will just bring up different topics or questions and I'll sit there and I go, I'm going to make this a video. And I'll go to my go to my phone, I'll put it in my notes, and I just kind of accumulate notes. Or I'll see something in the gym, like the people doing that crappy rotator cuff warm-up, and I'll go, i got to make a video about that. And I'll put it in my notes. Mm-hmm. So then I just have this long list of notes. And uh, and, I'll, and last night I was like, all right, we're just going to film all of these. But luckily, this time I remembered to bring some wardrobe changes. So I'm not wearing the exact same outfit That's for a good three idea. weeks of videos. <laughs> That's a good idea. I made that, I made that mistake. <laughs> on my last batch if you look i'm wearing the exact same thing and my wife is wearing the exact same thing over two weeks so i brought like four shirts and two pants and i was changing every four videos and it was it was funny but yeah the topics no set topics it's totally it's totally random i have numerous more for like low back pain with certain exercises and how to modify um but once again still not demonizing movement right right right. (laughs) um but it's it really is it really is all over it goes from training the feet to reduce pain while running up into releasing suboccipitals with a little cross ball. If you get tension headaches, it's, it's really all over. Yeah. You reminds me of, uh, do you, do you follow, uh, Cairo strength? Scott yes, Dunaway. Yep. His was just like, so he was telling me, he's like, I, I just re, re, uh, just a big old brain dump in there. And, uh, the shitty part about Instagram is you can't categorize really. Right. Um, I don't know if you're saving these as actually this, you know, YouTube style or not? Because you can categorize them in there. Are you you saving oh, them yeah. that way or are they only square? So I'm saving them as YouTube style. So it's this is actually really tricky because um, I had to figure out how Instagram would crop it because I couldn't get the settings to crop it in Adobe, uh, either because I couldn't figure it out or because it doesn't do it. So I, for the while there, I was exporting, uploading, a video and I would have to do that like six or seven times until I got the framing right. And then I just saved these lines that you can't see. So I, so I know how wide I can make it. Uh, but they do save on my computer and YouTube. And then when I export to Instagram, I know exactly how it's going to look in Instagram, nice. but you are right. I need to start transferring everything to a YouTube channel. And I was trying to debate on if I should make YouTube versions of those same videos, like take a one minute video and talk about it more mm-hmm. for three to four minutes maybe, or just upload the exact same video onto YouTube. What do you think I should do? Uh, you know, I think that, uh, I don't know I've had, I've had a couple, I've, I've had a bunch of experiences on YouTube and I feel like it's changed a lot over time. There's this one video I did that was 15 seconds. I think I got 70,000 views on it. People love that shit. I didn't say a word. I just showed one thing. That's it. I didn't even say it was four, but there's other ones that are like, the, the itch I'm trying to scratch on, say, there's chondromal H. patella. I kind of want to talk about pathology and this and this and that and some correctives and then some tissue work and blah, blah, blah. So it's 30 minutes. But oh, I wow. basically take sections of, like, this is one exercise I would use for it this way or so on. Um, so for some of those, I've actually taken – and keep in mind, I don't do any a lot of Instagram videos anymore – but some of them I wouldn't actually talk or I'd take my face out of it because then I can, I can talk over it and I can frame it better in that in, in entire video. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I, I think YouTube audiences are a little different than Instagram. Instagram, they're quick. You know, like I think yours are perfect because yeah. actually your intro might be a little long even for their – Yeah. But I like I it. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that because I think it's like six seconds or something or six or seven seconds. And I was like, this is really long for an Instagram video. Yeah. So I, I mean, I like it. It's probably perfect for a YouTube video. Um, mm-hmm. But I think YouTube, though, if you think about like the mentality they have to do to get in there, usually they're looking up how to stretch a hip flexor. So they'll, I think they'll give you a little bit 
more attention versus you, Instagram, you're scrolling and it has to catch your attention. So mm-hmm. I don't know how long, I mean, you can just keep rambling on those videos, I imagine, and just, just cut it where you think the most important part is for Instagram and keep the rest. That way you don't have to, I mean, your, your videos are great with, here's how to mobilize your hip flexor if you're sitting all day. That would be a great three minute video for YouTube. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. So <clears throat> I need to start doing that though. Cause I, I just created a Facebook page that isn't super fancy yet. So I'm like transferring everything from Instagram to Facebook. And now I know I need to do that with YouTube. And it's like, man, should I do that with Twitter also? And it's getting a lot to manage, but I don't really know how Twitter works all that much. I'm not very proficient with it. I don't either. I think most people though, don't they kind of stick to one platform or two and then they just, they, they hammer at that. Um, and then you like drive traffic into wherever you want them to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still got a lot to learn, man. <laughs> cool. But yeah, you're right. I think Kevin Christie did talk about that, like finding those, the strong ones and sticking with those. Right. Yeah. And I think he he's done a good job with like people are actually interactive on his Facebook page and yeah it's awesome he's yeah. killing it shit I mean you just got to get people to interact more on your Instagram you set you stay there mm-hmm. but what yeah, would hey there you go but what would you do if Instagram became no more Ooh, I'd probably, I'd probably cry <laughs> I, I cry a little bit because of how much effort I put into it already <laughs> for sure um, but I mean I, I would probably just start living on on YouTube I would imagine I mean I don't know what else I don't know what else they would there would be there's not really a substitute yeah facebook i guess but that's kind of not the best for these videos yeah well what do you plan where do you plan on taking this because uh good question you could be you could be a doc gen fit you could just be someone who just treats someone in clinic and you you're these are drivers to your business yeah so um of course we can all we can all hope and dream right and this is just a hope and dream and whatever it evolves into is whatever it was meant to be. Um, but my hopes and dreams for this would be, I had initially thought, okay, I'm going to be practicing somewhere in the future and I'm going to be treating and helping people in my community. But what about all the other communities that I can't reach out to who have either tried a provider and either wasn't successful or it just didn't work out for some reason. And they're kind of lost and don't know what else to do and don't really know where to go, I want to be able to help those people somehow too, or at least, at least give them guidance in some way. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to create something completely separate from, I'll call it doctor stuff, um, so that I can try to reach more people. So, um, rehab is kind of just a buzzword for people. And with fix, I'm always thinking about like, uh, you know, kind of, it's, it's not the connotation of, um, like to fix something, but it's like, get your fix, like get your addiction. Like mm-hmm. I got to get my fix. And I was thinking, all right, yuck, you got to get, you got to get your daily fix of movement or daily, you know, fix of rehab or whatever it is for you so that you can become empowered over your own health and, um, you know, take control and just be empowered and motivated in general. So I was like, all right, I'll just do rehab fix. And it was short and kind of buzzy for Instagram. So I was like, all right, it works. Mm-hmm. So ultimately I would like this to grow into what, whatever it ends up being you know, not a, not a big deal, whatever happens with it so that I can just help reach some form of population that might not be able to get reached from anyone else Mm -hmm. and maybe give them guidance and give them help in some way. And ideally if it ends up building into what I would like it to be submerging rehab fix within different communities and then doing sort of like, um, just basic one day seminars on how to keep yourself out of the doctor's office. So instead of doing clinician seminars over here, teaching like neurocentric approach just to different pains and whatever, I can do a one day seminar with a group of 200 people at a local fitness center or something and be like, Hey, like, you know, I'm a qualified physician, but I'm going to teach you how to never have to come see me again. And mm-hmm. here's how you do it. Cause I don't care about making money. I just want to, I just want to help people and it, you know, it'll drive some income too, but I just want to empower people as much as possible. And I think that would be a great avenue for me to do so. Nice. A whole seminar in demonizing lumbar flexion. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I know it's tough. I kind of I kind of got myself into a little bit of a swamp with certain terms I've said already. But hey, like I said, um, I don't think I know everything. And <laughs> I know I'll probably look back in a year from now at my current videos and be like, you know, I was saying this and I don't really agree with that anymore. I should probably change it to this. But I look at that as a positive because if I don't look back every year during my life and realize something needs to change, then I don't think I'm doing anything right. 
Mm-hmm. So I should always be looking back and realizing, okay, I used to say this, not entirely true. Let's say this now and always be changing. I mm-hmm. think that's how it should be everywhere. So I expect that to happen. And, and to be fair, you only have like one minute videos. <laughs> so if yes. they want more information, uh, you can put it all on YouTube or something. <laughs> it's tough. It is. It is very tough. And and my website, I'm going to have a website some point in the future to kind of hold all of this for me. Um, so I started like a Squarespace. I'm trying to figure that out myself. And man, that's tough. I just want to pay somebody to do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you want, if we can talk off air with um, one day about websites, if you want. Um, oh, absolutely. I might have some suggestions for you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else do you want to cover? Anything? Hmm. Uh, in regards to my goals with my Instagram and stuff, that pretty much covers that pretty much covers that for the most part, I think. Um, other specifics, like uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be cut out. Cut oh out. no, it won't. <laughs> it won't. No. At all. I don't. Get, oh my god. I don't. I don't cut any of it. <laughs> the pressure is so on right now. Jeez. Sorry. It's uh, all right. <laughs> well, it's it's always like you take the floor. Um, but you know how easy it is to just do a full clip. <laughs> so I'm, I like I said off air earlier. I like I think people like to see normal people. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're, we should keep this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay, okay. That's 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 fair. That's fair. Um, I don't know anything about like school or transition to practice or anything like that or. Well, you know, I think I don't know that, what they would want to hear. I don't know. You know, I, all I can tell you is my observation so far from students, and maybe you can tell me the other side because you're a student. So every student that I've encountered so far, except for one, has been very hooked into the idea that they are they don't number one, they don't they don't they don't feel confident that they can actually do everything right when they get out. And for some reason I felt like I could, which probably is a bad thing. But I was able to start my own practice with with under the the roof of another doc to say if I didn't know something then I can ask him and he has more clinical mm-hmm. experience. Second thing was that it's I feel like they're very they want to know a lot of clinical shit which is great but um, like if you already know everything that you know you can probably help out a lot of people so just start. Um, but they didn't care they didn't seem to care that much or be scared like scared to death about starting a business or finding mm-hmm. the job. I mean. Half the shit you're making on Instagram, it's basically a portfolio of how good you are and that you can demonstrate yeah. that you can communicate. Exactly. So why don't yeah, students do this? <laughs> I I don't know. I think a lot I think a lot of people aren't super comfortable with putting themselves out there. They're gonna think about um, how people are judging their videos or what they're saying, or they're afraid that they don't know enough yet. And it's not that I'm a I'm not afraid of those things, but like I just don't really care and I expect that it's gonna happen. Like I expect that there's going to be some brilliant minds out there seeing what I'm saying and be like, oh, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. But that's okay because someday I'll learn and someday I will. Um, so I just don't care about that. And I, and I see the importance, exactly what you said, of building a portfolio, showing, hey, I have drive in these different avenues. Um, we can work together because you, know, you mix your, your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and I don't know why more students don't do it because I think a lot of students out there know way more than they realize that they do at least the ones that are really you know working hard and it's like hey you can already be building your name and building your reputation like just do it now and it could open so many doors for you um and this right now is is evident of that because i would not be talking to you right now if i hadn't been working really hard on instagram and kind of networking with you and getting my name in your ear so this has already brought me so many opportunities just along with pushing myself really hard in school and networking. So um, I, I encourage everyone to do it, no matter what the profession is. Yeah, yeah, I agree. See, that was a good closing. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that a closing? <laughs> that, it could be. Um, by the it way, you, your dog didn't make a sound. She didn't make a sound. I think she's still, I haven't even looked back there. She's still sleeping right there. Did she you, is just passed out. Did you tranquilize her? Does she have narcolepsy? Oh my gosh, I didn't know. <laughs> she was playing a whole bunch. Last night, we actually were being pretty neglectful of her while we were filming our videos. And, you know, we forget that she's pretty well trained, but we forget that she's still young. And so we just like locked her upstairs with like two other dogs while we were filming everything. And like I said, we ended up being like three, four hours. And we're like, oh my God, like our dog is upstairs in a stranger's house. She's never <laughs> been in for like four hours straight. So she's pretty tuckered out from, from freaking from freaking out 
all night. But um, I used to train my dog to try to pee on everything in strangers' houses. That's that sounds like a great way to make friends. <laughs> that was mainly my sister's house. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's that's fair. Yeah, but only there. It's right, like, right. Only keep the keep the pee in the family. Yeah. Um, how can how can everyone reach you? You're probably thinking, oh, that was all. I thought that we were done. <laughs> No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I, I, could, I could talk a while. I get excited when I talk. Yeah. I will have um, to go in a second, though. I probably have a, a patient standing outside the door. <laughs> no way. How much, time, how much time do you have? Um, I told him five minutes ago, but I was running 10 minutes behind, so I got about two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, well, just real quick shout out. I want to give a shout out to R2P as a whole and my crew at Logan because I've learned so much through R2P and they've, they've given me so much and I'm getting to know people even more and i was recently offered a position with them as the national club president um because matt ward just graduated so i get to take over that spot and i'm seriously honored to have that opportunity and learn even more and network even more so i just want to give a big uh, hats off to them and encourage any student that is at Cairo school that has an r2p organization to absolutely attend and never miss it because it's hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of information for free and uh, we've grown it so much. When I became a rep, I was with um, uh, Kyle Utley, who's a good friend of mine. He's a class below me. We both became reps at the same time, and we both kind of had good marketing minds. And we were like, let's uh, let's figure out how to build this thing. And we went from averaging like seven students every every club when when we first came on to averaging like fifty. Wow, now. really and, good. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's, it's been phenomenal. So the R two P guys are just phenomenal. I got to give them a shout out and everything I've learned through them and, and Marianne and, you know, her with the opportunity for me. And, um, so that's, so that's been great. So if anyone out there is listening to this and you're getting ready to go to Cairo school, absolutely do not miss out on, on RTP wherever you're at, because you will be far better for it. I think the Um, biggest, I think the biggest question there, I'll probably thinking if I can go back to my schooling days, is there lunch there? Is lunch provided? So yeah, there's a cafeteria. Oh no! At the R two P in the, in the oh, lunch. No, 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 no! Oh. They can bring their lunches and eat it there, but Damn. we do not. We do not pay for anyone's food. We would always go to the the ones that had the food first. <laughs> it oh, was it gosh. was important. That's crazy! I didn't know they ever did that anywhere. They they did that at LACC or uh, SCU. So sometimes it's like, oh, there's gonna be pizza in O twenty. Okay, we're gonna go over there real f- like go be there first. Oh, the pizza, <laughs> the free pizza. Yeah, and, and you get it from Costco, so it doesn't cost that much at all. Oh my gosh! Well, well, you hear you hear what they say about the the clubs that offer the free pizzas now, right? What what? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not going to go any farther. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're trying. They're, try- they're trying to hook you. They're trying to hook you for for certain reasons. I kind of. I kind of. I kind of stay stay aware of those ones. Remember, you got to you got to bait people. You got to give them what they yeah. want, and then Ugh. switch them a little bit, but in an ethical way. So you give them pizza, and you switch them with corrective exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if it was with corrective exercise, I'd be all for it. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe maybe when they come in, they have to baby crawl to get the pizza. Oh, There's an obstacle course. Yeah. <laughs> exercise for pizza it's just like planet fitness right <laughs> right you can just do that whole you 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 see that video you ever see that video it's uh i think it's of a you know, fms uh, movement screens and they set up all these like uh they're just doing they were crawling along the beams and going over and under the hurdles mm-hmm. yeah just yeah. do that and when they walk in that's the way to the <laughs> pizza the ground oh, is hot gosh. lava do not touch it <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that would that would be amazing. Someday, someday yeah. we'll implement it. And I'll, I'll film it. I'll make a video out of it. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, <laughs> um, thanks so much for being on. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's been awesome, and it's an honor to be on your show as well. I've been a long time listener. I've learned a lot from you, from the guests you've had on, and it's pretty crazy to 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 be a part of it. Oh yeah, you're the man. I like it. Thanks. You're you're, you're doing way way better than the Instagram shit than I ever will. So. You'll you'll be because I have no life. You'll be at 10k before you know it. <laughs> hey, my my goal is July of next year. Yeah, you can make it so in a year if that happens. Make it, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give myself a year. Yeah, That'd be nice. All right, guys, that was Grant Elliott again. You can find him at Rehab Fix on Instagram. And as he mentioned, he's going to have some YouTube stuff going on too. Um, any links that we talked about are going to be included in the show notes. You can find them on P Two Sports Care. That is P the number two or P the letter two the number of sports is plural care dot com. There's a search bar right there. You just put in one twenty, which is going to be Grant's one, or just put in Grant or Elliot with two L's and two T's. I think Grant, if I got that wrong, sorry. I was looking on your Instagram page. You don't have your name on there anymore. 
anyways, so go ahead and search 120. You'll find all the notes in there. But um, just to give you a little bit of a, of a heads up too, over the next couple of weeks you or months, you're going to find that I'm going to be posting a lot more stuff about a book. So if you've been following my content for a while, you know that, I, again, I like making content and I've experienced some back pain over my life. I've had two major incidences of it and I've been able to learn a lot from it. Now, um, the book that I've created, it's about a four-hour read. It's going to be uh, mainly focused on how to get your mind right for recovery. And if you're a pa- if you're a patient, have you ever has anyone ever offered you help and you didn't take it? Think about think about why. Think about the mental barrier. Did you not trust the person? Did you not trust the process? Do you have a belief that your your back is weak or that you're old or that genetics made you that way? You know, and clinicians think about this too. It's like when you have a patient call, what is the hang up? It's not always just price. Sometimes they have a past belief um, about what's going on with them with their with their body. Also, too, if you write an write an amazing article on something, and some people call and some people don't, what's the difference, right? So, I personally believe there is a big mental barrier between deciding to get better and not. And in the book, I made the example of the cool runnings analogy, where Yul Brenner walks up Junior to the window or the mirror and he says, hey, I see pride. I see power, you know? So he gets down with that and getting him into a winning mindset to go out and have that bar fight, basically. So that is the premise of the book. There is no corrective stuff in there. It tells a story of my back pain, how I recovered, what the, some, stuffs I did, some stuff that I did to recover, as well as some mental exercise you can use to get yourself in a mental mindset for recovery. Get a winning mindset first before you actually start implementing the stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of debunking myths in there, as well as going into a lot of the common diagnosis you hear: degenerative disc disease, disc herniations, facet syndrome, pinched nerves, muscle spasms. You're out of alignment. You're old. Things like that. So those are all in there, and I touch on them all and give them merit or not give them merit based upon what I've read and what I've learned. So. If you guys are interested in this book, it's going to be available on the site, p2sportscare.com, and there's also an audible version. There's going to be. So if you like my voice or you don't have time, the audible is going to be there. So I'm hoping this is going to really get a, uh, a lot more people in for care all around the world and try to get them through their mental barrier first. So it's something I'm really excited about. So thanks again, Grant, for being on. It was amazing. And you put me back into the uh, into the mind space of being a student. You're doing a great job, um, and I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, I forgot. I got to sign out. Huh? I think I forgot last time is leave people better than how you found them. And if you're a dater, date an Eagle Scout. See you guys later. <laughs>